Put all your videos on Logo Lockdown. Hey Power Director Peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik and I'm back on your screen with more of that Power Director love you're looking for. The Power Director love you need from Power Director University. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on placing logo watermarks on your videos, but before we get started I want to give a shout out to one of our subscribers, Nyan1012AJ. Now, she makes videos on animation and gaming on her channel. Head over to her channel, watch some of her videos. If you're feeling what she's dealing, make sure that you subscribe to Nyan1012AJ, alright? So let's get down to business. Placing a logo watermark on your videos is really important to protect your content. It stops other people from stealing your videos. Now, if you are just posting videos on YouTube, then I'm going to show you a link to how you can do that with YouTube. So the link is going to be right up here in the corner of the video. But if you're not posting your videos to YouTube, then you need to know how to add a logo watermark to protect your videos when you're showing them outside of YouTube. So let's jump off into the software and make it happen. All right, Power Director peeps, here we are in CyberLink Power Director 15 Ultimate, and I'm about to show you how to create a logo watermark that you can save to use for all of your videos. Let's get it cracking. All right, so the first thing that you see here is if I hit play, so we got a clip in the timeline, pretty cool little motorbike stuff going down here, you know, a little dirt flying everywhere. Slow motion loving. It's all gravy. All right, so I'm going to bring this back to the beginning here. I'm just going to click on the home button to bring my playhead back to the beginning. And the first thing I need to do is I need to go to the PIP objects room. Once I get here, you can see that I'm under the custom area. And these are actually PIP objects that I created that I can place into the video in specific positions or things that create different animations. I created all kinds of stuff here. So this is for your custom things. If I clicked on all content up here, you see everything, all the stuff that Power Director has included, but I'm gonna leave it on custom for now. You don't have to be in the custom settings to do this. That's just where I'm gonna be at right now. So the next thing that we have to do is we need to go up here to create a new PIP object from an image. When you click on that, it's gonna send you to a location on your computer and now you need to navigate to the location where the photo that you wanna use as your logo watermark is located. So I would recommend just using a PNG image with a transparent background because you can skip some of the steps if you have that. If you don't have a PNG image with a transparent background. I'm going to show you what you can do to help make things look a little bit more professional. So I'm going to choose one that's not a PNG image. And then I'll show you how to do it with one that is a PNG image. So if you have something that's not a PNG image, like a JPEG, click on it and select it. And then click on open. So then it opens that image in the PIP designer. So the few things that you can do from here, the first thing you need to do is resize and position your image where you want it to be. So I'm just gonna put my cursor over this node until it turns into a line with two arrows. I'm gonna left click to hold down my mouse and I'm gonna drag it to where I want it. So it's gonna keep this aspect ratio right now, which is a good thing. So I'm gonna drag it down and bring it to the size I want and then I'm gonna place my cursor over the image until I see crosshairs with four arrows. I'm gonna left click and hold down my mouse and I'm gonna move this to the position I want it to be in. And that's good there. So now that I've resized it and I placed it in a position I want, I wanna get rid of this white background. If you don't wanna get rid of this white background, you can leave it like it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on the chroma key button or box and I'm going to click on the drop down arrow to get my options for chroma key. Next, I'm going to click on this eyedropper tool. 
which activates it. And when I bring my cursor over the PIP designer preview, now it changes from a cursor to an eyedropper. And now I just need to place my eyedropper where it's over the color that I want to remove. And you can tell by the grid that I'm over white. So if I click on it now, it should remove all of the white from the image. So now you have the image without the white. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to bring this back up here because I don't need those settings anymore. I'm going to click on object settings. And here, if you wish to do so, this is a creative choice or it's really about your preference. I'm going to change my opacity. So here I can either use the slider or I can click in here where the numbers are, highlight it and type in a number I want. I want 50%, so I'm gonna type in 50 and hit the Enter key. And now you see that my logo, you can see things behind it. So after this, if you want to, you can go back to some of the other settings. You can add reflection, you can add a border, you can flip it if the image is the wrong way around. There's a lot of creative choices you can make here and you can change things as you see fit. And once you're done, you wanna click on Save As. Once you do that, you give your template a name and you click on OK. And now you click on OK again. And as you can see, now I have the PIP object that I created, and it's also showing a preview of it, but I have it in my custom section for the PIP objects room. So now I can left click this and drag it down into the timeline. And here you see it over the video now. I can also place my cursor at the end, left click it and drag it to match the length of the video or the length of whatever I'm doing. And now if I scrub the timeline, you see I have my logo over the video. Now, if you wanna add more creative options to this, you can actually right click on it. And if you go to set clip attributes, you can set blending mode and you can do more. You can uh, change it to overlay. You can change it to multiply. You can do whatever you want with the blending mode. It just adds more of your creative juices to it if you want to have that. But keep in mind, the blending modes piece won't be saved as part of your PIP object in the PIP objects room. Now, real quick, if you have a PNG image, I'll show you how to do it. Basically, you're just going to take out the steps with the chroma key. Go in here, same place we were before. And this time, if I select a PNG image, you'll notice that it does not have a background. So it takes out one of those steps. Everything else you can still do the same, position it, um, add some opacity if you want to, make any other changes you wanna make to it, all that good stuff. All you're doing really differently is just, you're not using the chroma key piece with the PNG image because it already has a transparent background. Everything else you really do the same. So you would name it, Hit OK. Hit OK again. And now you can basically see that besides the size, they're the same. There's not much different in these. So it's really up to you whether you have a PNG image available to use or not. And you just want to be quicker with your steps. Or if you don't have a PNG image, go ahead and use a JPEG. And if it has a solid background, you can easily remove that. If you have a background that's not solid, it's a lot of different colors, you're not going to be able to 
use the chroma key here to remove the background. It has to be one solid color in order for you to use the chroma key here to remove the background. So that's it. Logo watermark for your videos. All right, Power Director peeps. Thanks for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. Now, if you want to get a shout out like 9, 10, 12, AJ did, then make sure that you go to the video description below this video and click on the shout out request form. Now, if you want to make a tutorial request, then the only way I accept tutorial requests is through my tutorial request form. So go to the video description and click on that link to fill out that form. Now, do me a favor. Click on the thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction. It lets other people know that the content in this video was good and that they should watch it too. Also, if you want to chop it up, you got any questions, you need help with something, leave that stuff in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. And after you do that, click on the bell. When you do that, you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. And that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.